Hello and welcome to the AFL Auto Blends 3D Car Creation channel. Um, this is the second part of a, a series that I'm doing to, which is modelling a 1950 to 1954 um, Jowett Jupiter. Um, it was primarily a, a road going car, um, about 900 of these cars were made. Um, and it's it's got a fairly good race race history too, so very interested in in, in doing this one. Um, as I say, this is the second part, which is basically opening up Blender, setting the preferences, um, setting the environment, and getting the basic dimensions um, in 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 the way of a cube um, to set the scene. And then basically um, in the next part I shall be um, adding the, the blueprints and setting them up. Okay, so let's get going. So I've, I've opened Blender here. And this is what you'll see if you have recently downloaded it. If you haven't downloaded it, then go into your browser, type, type Blender. Blender download and then go into there and um, you'll go to the site and you just load up the uh, latest version okay I tend not to <clears throat> I'm using 2.90 um, at the moment because I tend to use the next version when it's been um, used for, for a while as um, invariably as as bugs and whatever there anyway this is the car we're modeling Jowett Jupiter, as I said before, there was 900 made of these cars made. It was a body style, it's a two-seater drop-head coupe with wind-up windows. Um, pretty basic, four-speed manual, 1500cc uh, flat four engine. Um, now the dimensions, this is the interesting bit for us. Um, the dimensions, the wheelbase <coughs> is 93 um, inches, which is 2.4 2.4 meters long so that's what we need for the side view um, the width is 62 inches or 1.6 meters um, wide and the height is 56 inches or 1.4 meters high okay so we go into blender if you haven't um, I've already got mine set up so I'll go, go into in, into my my version Blender. So what I what I do straight away um, on any any new project is to set the preferences, or if I get a new version of Blender, I reset the pre preferences. Um, so you can go through the interface, the themes, viewport. I won't go through that, um, and then change anything that you want to. <coughs> have a <coughs> excuse me. Have a play around with the controls and um, see see what. Um, see what you want um, well one one thing I do do is 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 um, apply add-ons now there's a few add-ons I use one's called measure it so if you uh, I probably won't be using that on this one so but if you want to it's um, it's, it's a good measuring tool um, which makes it more like CAD so that's a good one <clears throat> another one I use is loop tools so if we press type loop in there and it should come up with mesh loop tools <coughs> excuse me um, so I've all you do is tick the box I've already ticked mine um, another one is node wrangler um, we'll get into that as we as, as we get into the process but this this um, um, stage I highly recommend that you you add that one um, and the last one I use extensively is Bolt Factory. So type in Bolt Factory, click on that, click on the little tick box and bring it in. Um, just a quick um, thing about the Blender interface. If you use the standard Blender key map, um, then one on your numpad is the is the front view. Okay. You can easily tell it's a front view because the blue vertical line is the is the Z or Z axes? The red line is the width, um, 
or the x-axis press number three um, that is the side view I like my cars so that the um, the front is facing towards the left hand side so the green line is the y-axis so there's the Z, Z or Z there again press control and one for the rear so that's the rear view press seven for the top view now that's all the orthographic views as soon as you scroll and tilt that then goes into user perspective okay so for this instance we'll be uploading the cube on the side axis so the first thing to do for me anyway is to press shift and a and add a mesh cube okay so we've got our cube now press the N key to to get the, the list of options um, press down key on transform now make sure your rotations are all set at zero it's automatically coming up with 90 for some reason it screws up the axes so make sure that the rotation is zero and then this is the physical dimension of your cube so you've got x axes you've got y axes and you've got z axes okay so if we go press 3 into the numpad again so looking at the um, information I was looking at earlier um, the wheelbase is 2.4 so we'll set it for um, so we'll set that for 2.4 2.4 okay the height was 1.4 so the height which is Z is 1.4 and the width of the car is uh, 1.6 so there we are we've got um, remember that's the wheelbase that's not the total length of the car so we'll get the total length of the car once we've um, once we've put the blueprints in there. Okay. Now the other thing I like to do is set the cube so that the base is on the on the axes. So if we just take it, move it up using the arrow or the M key or the G key, G and Z key, just move it up to there. Okay, and then. We know it's going to be about 0.7 then, 0.7, some, some strange reason. <clears throat> okay, so that's now sitting on the, um, that's now sitting on the, on the, uh, on the axes. So for some strange reason, the scales are not correct. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Okay, so um, if we go into the front, if we go into the front, go into edit mode. So press either go up to this little drop down menu and press edit, or you simply press the tab button. Okay, um, go into um, press Z key and go into wireframe. So wireframe view, and then you select with using B key B, and then you just scroll across, and that selects the the um, axes. Okay, so what what I forgot to do originally is put a loop cut. So pr press Control R and put a loop cut right down the middle <clears throat> okay so what we're doing is getting rid of one side and then we'll put mirror modifier in to to mirror it to the other side okay so now we press the B key highlight the vertices we don't want press X for delete and delete the vertices okay and um, we go over to this little spanner across here so go into object mode so press the tab key press the Z key to go to solid okay add modifier 
go to mirror. Okay, so it's mirrored across to the other side. Now it's important to click that clip in. What that means is that if you're extruding towards there, towards the towards an axis, um, and if you go over it, if it's if it's not if you haven't got clip in, it'll go it will go over it. Um, if it's if you've clicked clip in, it physically stops there. Um, if you didn't click clip in, then you would have issues with your mesh at the place where it mirrors. Okay, so it's always important to press clip in, and always make sure that your mirror modifier is at the top of any modifier stack that you got. So if you've got subdivision, if you've got solidify, if you've got any bevels, if you've got any other um, types of, of modifier, make sure that your mirror is at the top. Okay. So that's the physical dimensions of the vehicle set. Okay. Um, now I've I typically set my scene collections up as blueprint. There's nothing in there at the moment, but if you want a new collection, just press the your right mouse button and press new collection and then just simply type in the collection. So I've got one for blueprints, I've got one in for body, which I'm going to change that now. So you just double click into that and I'm going to put guide meshes. So I tend to, to use guide meshes in my modeling. Um, we will have another one when we start to doing the actual body after we've created the guide mesh, um, but there's no need to put it in there now. Um, and then we put in studio. So this is the this is the studio. Um, I've got a series of lights. So you can see here if I highlight all the lights. So you've basically got um, you've got lights at the both at the front and the back, both sides, okay, and that's what I tend to do. If you want any more, put them up. But once you've set them, just rotate, click on them, and rotate them to so you can get the line that you want to get, okay. So do that, okay, and then we um, so we've got the lights in. Then after that we um, enter the camera controller. So the camera controller is this. Okay, so you press Shift and A. Um, and set a, uh, an empty. So you set an empty, okay, and then you what you do is then parent your camera to to the empty to so that creates a camera controller. And we'll go into more into that in detail when we start rendering, but that's just what it is for now. And then the, your environment, and that's basically your, your HDRI backdrop. Um, so typically, what you do is to is to create is to load in a a, a box, okay. Um, the important thing is to put an edge loop all the way down the, towards the bottom. Um, add a mirror modifier to it, or sorry, a subdivision. Subdivision, uh, it should be at two really. So levels of viewport at two and render at three. Okay, so set that. Um, and then make sure that it drops, so when you're looking at it, from the front view, make sure that the inside face is above there. So that's why I've just dropped that down. Just drop that down um, on the Z axis to make sure that you're, and there it is. Okay, so that's how um, much I'm gonna do in this, um, in this, ep in this um, part. Um, I will be doing the blueprints um, hopefully tomorrow, um, so please follow along and then we will start modelling. Thank you.